any type of engagement is always getting to know people and hearing the story. So I want to say thank you to all the sponsors who are here and getting to know us and in an authentic way. And and this is this is the way forward. So I really appreciate you all being here and, and lending support and getting to know us and really getting to know us as as, and, as a community members and and in a professional context as well. Yeah. And next up we have William. William is, um, I'm happy to say, another Vancouver uh, tech uh, individual, and he definitely knows his, his way around the tech community and um, is and always has been doing so many amazing projects and works to build community. And I would say he absolutely falls along the theme of all of our speakers today, but they're all community builders and have a, an insatiable desire to bring people together in their industry and for the greater good of all. And if I were to say that would be definitely a trait that tends to be traditional from our community. So um, thank you for being an impact leader. I will just quickly give you a quick in, um, inter, um, introduction. Um, William is the editor of the tech journal, Vancouver, Vancouver Tech Journal. And he was recently named the top, which was recently named the top newsletter for tech news in Vancouver by the Georgia Strait. Um, with focus on business and technology, William's writing has been featured in outlets such as the Beta Kit, BC Business, McLean's, The Globe and Mail, Daily Hive, Ottawa Magazine, and University Affairs. In addition, he's been a speaker and communicator and innovate at innovation events um, like BC Tech, Tech Vancouver, Marketing Connection, and so many more. Um, he's active on the uh, Council of British Columbia. He's an advisor with Brain Station. So he's out there doing the work and just coming from an authentic place and a natural community builder. So thank you for being an impact leader and I will let you tell your story. <laughs> Hey there, thanks. Can you guys hear me all right? Yes. Great. Um, uh, for the first comment is you're going to make me go after the woman who did business with Obama. I don't think you can follow that up, uh, but uh, I heard that and I thought that was super, super cool. Um, and it's great to be here talking just among some uh, other incredible individuals. Um, I know we're, we're running tight for time, so I'll, I'll try to be really quick here. Um, William Johnson, founder of the Vancouver Tech Journal. Um, I'll kick this off with a quick tech quote. I think people know this quote, you can't connect the dots going forward, looking forward, you can only connect them looking backwards. You, so you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. It's a Steve Jobs quote, Steve Jobs, Apple CEO founder. So obviously something like that's really close to my heart. So I'm gonna try and do that today, right? Um, I'm gonna try and connect the dots looking backwards. Everything I've done, obviously I didn't plan it, right? A lot of it happened by accident, but it turned out all right. So. Uh, what dots are we connecting? Um, so let's just look back at the last year, right? I registered business for the first time last year, consulting business, got multiple clients right away. I leveraged the tech newsletter as a content marketing tool, I sold that newsletter to another company. They actually hired me uh, since this past January, we've grown the subscriber base of that newsletter 550%. Super exciting, working on another side hustle now. So that's where we're at. So I guess the question is, uh, how does a very average political science student that grew up in a tiny farming community in Ontario end up in the role that I am in right now, running a, a tech publication? As I said, there's no plan, uh, but here's the story. In, uh, here, I guess here's what I learned on the way, right? So this story begins in Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, I was born on August 24th, but that's a made-up date. It's an estimate because actually... As a baby, I was abandoned and I was left in a basket and I was left at a police station in Kingston, Jamaica, off a street called Payne Avenue. So my birthday, believe it or not, is actually made up. Um, so in some documents, uh, in my social work documents, my birthday is August 22nd. In some documents, it's August 24th, uh, which is funny. So, you know, it could be my birthday today. Maybe we're actually here celebrating my birthday tonight. Anyway, I was adopted by a wonderful woman in Canada, my mother, Linda. I grew up in this little small farming town called Winchester, went to high school there, played hockey there. I was a defenseman. I was number 32. I ended up going to university uh, at Carleton University in Ottawa. Uh, like I said, I was a very average political science student. Uh, the majority of the time I was not in class. I was busy building my network. I was volunteering. I was building relationships. 
And while I was doing that polytech degree, I enjoyed reading and writing so much um, that I thought, you know what, maybe I want to work in journalism or maybe I want to work in communication somehow. So I called the registrar's office and I said, uh, how do I get into the journalism program? And they said, you can't get into the journalism program. Your, your grades are too bad. So I said, oh, okay. Uh, so I went to the student newspaper's office, the Charlton, and I said, hey, I want to write for the newspaper. And they said, oh, okay, like, why not? Uh, so that's how I started writing for a living. Um, I started volunteering for the newspaper. And then I got really lucky, and I met a communications professional from the university at a coffee shop at, on campus. And I said, I want your job. And her name was Jen Elliott. And she said, oh, okay, like, I'm actually really busy. Let's get coffee again. And lucky enough, she gave me a summer job as a communications assistant. And that's how I got into writing and communications, which again, connects to my job now, eventually. So graduated from Carleton University, I ended up working some terrible jobs. But when I wasn't working these terrible jobs, at night I was attending uh, what anyone who's in the social media will remember, they were called tweet ups. This is the early days of Twitter where everyone was tweeting and, and you actually knew everyone on Twitter. And then people would meet up in cities and talk about their Twitter accounts. And it was so cool to meet people in real life. So I was doing that. And at the same time, I was blogging for fun about people in business. And the most exciting people were entrepreneurs and they were people who were building tech companies in Ottawa. And so one of those companies I was blogging about for fun was this little company that you might know called Shopify, which is Canada's most valuable company now. Um, but so the interesting thing was, is that I was working this terrible job and I was also writing and blogging for fun. And again, continuing to build my network. Um, and so I was working this terrible job. I got an email one day randomly from the university saying, oh, hey, Will, like, I know who you are. Do you want to come take this job? No interview. It's 50K. This is over a decade ago when I was like 21. And we just want to give you this job. And I thought that was pretty r ridiculous. But it was someone who I built a network with, someone who I had a really good relationship with and good connections. And again, this was someone I met when I wasn't in class, but I was networking and building relationships. And this was one of the first times where I just really realized the power of relationships and how important they are even when you aren't looking for them or even when you don't need them. It's good to have those relationships in the bank. Uh, fast forward, let's say five, 10 years, uh, I moved to Vancouver without a job. Uh, but the interesting thing was, is when I moved here, I messaged a woman, her name was Cheryl Draper. She worked at a cool company called Invoke, which for anyone who uh, knows Invoke, they're the company that produced food suite. Anyway, I met Cheryl at these tweet up events back in Ottawa. Cheryl connected me to another woman who connected me to another woman, and then they hired me uh, for a job with the BC government, right? And again, this is one of those times where a relationship I had developed in the past that, again, I wasn't really leveraging for anything, uh, helped to give me a really great opportunity here in Vancouver, right? So how did I actually become, a, I guess, a legit tech writer, media entrepreneur person? Uh, to be honest, it's not a fancy story, and I think this is probably good for everyone here, that it's nothing special. I sent a tweet at the West Coast editor for Betakit, which is a national tech news site. And I said, hey, let's get coffee. I want to do some tech writing. And he said, yeah, you know, I really just appreciated that you just sent me a really direct message and said, hey, I want to do this. Uh, well, yes, you do need some writers. So at the same time that I was interviewing to get a job at BCIC uh, that Cheryl connected me with, I was doing freelance writing for Betakit, the national tech publication, right? Uh, so I ended up writing and then I got the job at BCIC. I stopped doing the writing for a bit. And I worked at Innovate BC, which is the new brand of BCIC. And I was a junior employee, but I networked like crazy. And while I was working there and networking, I started this thing called the Vancouver Tech Journal, which is what I uh, oversee today. Started writing it for fun. It just went out to four people initially. Uh, it grew to about a thousand people over a couple of years. Uh, but while I was writing and growing it, other publications started to say, hey, we like what we're doing. We need more tech coverage. Why don't you come do some writing for us? Publications like BC Business and publications like uh, Daily Hive. I started to develop relationships with those editors. So I'm going really, really fast just to get to present day. So fast forward to August 2020. So this is last year. This is in the midst of COVID. We're in a pandemic. We're in a recession. Um, and I was given an opportunity to do some really cool consulting. So I worked for the BC government and I actually quit my BC government job during the pandemic to open a consulting practice, practice called it Wilson Studio. Will, because of William, son, because of Johnson, get it, Wilson Studio. Uh, so I initially did some uh, work with a thought leadership firm consulting. And then um, I actually texted four people I knew from the tech sector, said, hey, I just started my own business. 
uh, actually, you know, fully registered it, like I'm going to really go for it. Um, if you have, have any work at all, uh, I really appreciate it. If you just, just let me know, I, I need some hours and then get this, uh, every single one of them basically said, how fast can you start? Like, can you start next Monday? We've got this many hours. We need this work done immediately. And so, I mean, I guess you can guess who these people were. Uh, they were all people I met networking these previous years before, or the people who read my newsletter that I happened to write for fun. That was pretty remarkable. Um, but the more remarkable thing was, is if you fast forward just four months after that, um, I find myself on the other end of a Zoom call with an editor that I did some freelance writing work for. And he's saying to me, uh, tell me how much money you want for us to buy your newsletter from you and to hire you to continue building it. And that was like the craziest thing ever. Um, and so fast forward two more weeks after that, I've shut down my consulting practice for the most part. And I've joined another company called Overstory Media Group uh, that is investing in me. They bought the newsletter brand from me. They've actually hired me uh, and they're paying me to continue to build it and giving me the support to bring on new partners and other companies. And uh, between January and now we've grown that subscriber base, like I said earlier, over 550%, which is extraordinary. And we're bringing on partners and making it a sustainable business. Uh, so that really, really exciting journey, just again, from again, little small farming town to where I am today. And again, I went through really, really fast. Um, but again, remember the point of this was for me to connect some dots moving backwards. What happened? How did that happen? What have I learned? Are there any takeaways? Uh, first thing, relationships. I think those are probably the most second most important thing in your life. Relationships are so critical. Uh, you got to build them. You got to invest in them. It's like passive power. It's like fuel for your ambition. And I think nearly all of my opportunities have come from relationships. Second one, writing. I think writing is probably the most important skill in business in life. It helps create your network. It helps clarify thinking and ideas. For me, it's like investing in stocks. Uh, it's content. Um, it sort of works while you sleep, right? So I can write something once and a thousand people can read it this week, tomorrow, or the rest of the week. Um, and it's helping me grow my network. Uh, exponentially. And then the third thing, action. Research. People do a lot of research and they plan and they plan and they plan. Uh, something I like to say is research is a euphemism for procrastination or research is Latin for inaction, right? You just need to do stuff, right? You just need to see what you can get away with, right? Action is learning. Um, there's a really interesting uh, concept in a book called The Lean Startup, uh, where it's basically you need to build a product to the point where you can actually learn something from your customers, right? Then recalibrate and do more um, and so for me, I've, I've sort of found that, right? I just do as much as I can do to the point where I'm getting feedback from my audience or from my customers, right? So writing cold emails, launching blogs, websites, asking people directly, um, to work with me. So again, the three things, relationships, writing and, and taking action. And so those are my three takeaways just from my journey. And again, I try to do it as fast as possible. Thank you. That was amazing, William. Oh my goodness, I'm so inspired. <laughs> I'm so inspired. First off, um, I 100% understand about the importance of networking. It's one of the, the values that I, I live by and has been one of the, the strengths for myself as well. And um, when you said writing is like investing in the stock market. Okay, that's next level. I really like that, that quote there. Um, question for you. You know, so many people say, I want to do what I'm passionate about. You've done it. You know, I want to build a business that I'm passionate about. You've done yeah. it in an authentic, organic way. And we don't hear those stories that often, you know. And I have to say, one, congratulations. Um, and, and two, I think the day that we're in, especially being in the digital ecosystem and tech, you know, people often sleep on the importance of writing. And we spend so we're so much focus on you know online advertising and, and Google ads, but you are a classic case of how you've been able to navigate the world, have an exit, okay, an unintentional exit, should I say, um, through writing. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So so I'll just get you to 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 share a little insights on how you were able to stick with your passion, you know, of writing, and didn't get kind of in that sense of it's going to pay right now and you know 
that the conundrum of do I leave my passion alone? Do I do I go for my job? How did you balance it out and make it work? Because you you know you did it. You you did it. What we'd all love to to say. We've got it. The exit speaks for itself. <laughs> well, I mean, like, there's not. Um... Honestly, the answer is not good, right? The answer is that <laughs> it was my passion and I was just going to keep doing it, right? And right. Um, I think the the fact that writing was my passion and then you combine that with the fact that I was actually shipping things, I was sending stuff out, I was sharing my work, plus the fact mm -hmm. that um, I had developed these relationships. So all those, yeah. three, those three things combined, I think is what made yeah. it work for me. Again, the person mm -hmm. who approached me who said, hey, we want to buy your newsletter and like keep you to do it. Uh, that mm -hmm. person was an editor a few years ago, but that person is now a CEO with significant financial resources. So like, I didn't mm -hmm. know that was going to happen, um, but right. I got to leverage that relationship that I had developed in the past. So it's a mm -hmm. combination of those three things. Yes. And, you know, I really appreciate your vulnerability of letting people know you, you know, and because when, when people know you as a person, that's how you can bridge those gaps um, of perception. And when you can tell your own story, you know, you didn't have to worry about um, what was happening in the media and what perceptions people had because you were in control of your own destiny. And that's extremely empowering, especially to um, as, as, a, as a black entrepreneur to know that, yeah, no, you, you created your own narrative and you made it work for you in an empowering way. And through your writing, people were able to see your worth and your value, and it was a win-win. So congratulations on that. And um, I think that um, we're all going to really rethink about, um, you know, writing in terms of investing in the stock market. I like that because it lives forever. And with a few, mm -hmm. a few uh, links and, and clicks, you know, you could, you can always monetize it and you can also um, build those relationships as well. Any any kind of lasting tips you'd just like to leave before you before you go on on your journey? Uh, no, I, I I mean I don't think I have any more here. I just want to say that I've really mm -hmm. appreciated the other talks. Um, Good. Yeah, I, yep. I just I've been really enjoying it. So thanks to the previous speakers okay. and also Nadine. Yeah, killed it. So yeah, been fun. Yes, <laughs> thank you and and thank you for solidifying the importance of because you did that um, and building authentic relationships because this is this is the era of of, of community and um, we are definitely about and, and thank you for the vulnerability of sharing your your story and and your wins congratulations thank you thanks <laughs> excellent yeah, all right William, thank, thanks so much wow that yes. was uh that, that was a whirlwind story uh, yes <laughs> that is quite the quite the journey there that's that was amazing see i i, I knew you but i didn't really know you but now i do a little bit more so <laughs> amazing but thanks so much yeah. for that okay. thanks. and uh, i look forward to seeing you in real life very soon maybe even next week over a coffee with the uh, with your other other group yes. there that you to, to build community and build relationships as you do walking that walk.